Hey guys, today on All Chat, we've got some real scary art. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, Mel is out for the week, so Freak will be on the couch for this episode. Let's get right into Summer Showcase. First up, we have a League of Legends toy animation from Simple in Korea. The animation is just super well done. One, Garen last hits those minions like a boss, so he's probably pretty fed. It's a really cool idea, positioning you know, the League of Legends characters as a toy line. I think my favorite part of this entire animation though is the minions. Yeah. The fact that he gave them a little bit more life and purpose and you really watch them duke it out as well. So they are a part of the different factions. These are like the most competent minions I've ever seen. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Next up, we've got a Panda Annie stream overlay by Kiriaki from the UK. This one specifically was made for AnnieBot, the streamer, and this actually came out as a response to the new HUD. Some of it is official splash art that's released from Riot, some of it is fan art that's been done. She makes them all specifically for specific streamers, and it's a lot of effort to handcraft one for every single person who wants one. I like the fact that a lot of these overlays are made with like the champion in mind. Like there's a champion theme clearly, and I think that's really cool. Next up, Mithril Golem made some horrifying versions of champions you might not expect. These guys are actually a bit scary, maybe freaky, if you will. They do have a weird resemblance to you. Yeah, I, I, I gotta say, I look very similar to this Cho'Gath art up here. It kind of reminds me of something like very Dark Souls. It's very, you know, very dark, very... Um... Souls. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> no, but I think it's just really cool that he takes certain characteristics of champions and then totally reimagines them, right? But then, like, goes really far with yeah, it. Yeah, really like, far. Like, the is a good example the big of, gory, like, like, you have Tiger Stance, paw. like, stitched on Tiger Arm that's bloody as <laughs> from mauling your face. Like, <laughs> and like a bunch the, of cuts oh, on it itself. Oh, yeah, it's like, oh, okay. It's Tiger Stance Udyr. I get it. <laughs> The next up, Logan Feliciano made a Piltover inspired recreation of Summoner's Rift. And he's clearly inspired by the Jinx music video because he takes a lot of elements from that. What blows me away is how much they can glean from like a couple images. Because yeah. when you watch the Jinx video, there are actually very few shots of architecture. Like the image of maybe three or four buildings, he can create the elements of an entire city. So you see inhibitors and the nexus and the, the shop. What if Summoner's Rift was influenced in that style? Next up we have Sosenka with some scary realistic Zed makeup. She's from Poland. This ultimately takes about three to four hours for her to apply, but the fact that after three to four hours you can barely tell where the actual features of her face are right. is phenomenal. This is ludicrous. Like I don't I don't have <laughs> better like, adjectives yeah. for like how ridiculously awesome this is. I think the kicker to all this too is that she's self-taught. She taught herself how to do all this, and that is amazing to me. Cause like, yeah, with the Rex Island, yeah. um, where is her face? That just looks like someone just drew Rex eye and was like, yeah, it's makeup, I guess. Timo! I mean, Timo. Is the Timo one? Yes. And it's it's the most trolly of all. Cotton tail team. <sighs> the Nami one is pretty scary. It's like creepy mermaid fish lady. Yeah, that's yeah, probably- Yeah, I realize that I don't want mermaids to be a thing anymore. Josh is I'm guessing his mermaid fetish right now. <laughs> now we've got an amazing Oriana cosplay by Kayla, AKA Nine Flame. This is 400 hours, and like over eight months of effort. And it shows this thing is, Stupid good. She was saying that this whole cosplay uh, weighs 40 pounds, so like, it's <laughs> I can imagine it just being like a workout, just walking around to con in that thing. It's also a cool marrying of two things, which is the constructed elements of the cosplay, the things that she had to build, but also the makeup. She includes a ton of process pictures too, and um, she herself was a dancer for 16 years. Oriana is a ballerina. She says she chose the champion because of that connection that she had with it. F is for Flash because it just makes sense. Yours lives on the wrong key. D is the place you put every other spell whenever you play in me. And finally, since we have Freak here, we're going to end with F is for Flash by the Papushi. And for those of you that don't know, Freak and I have a long standing disagreement uh -huh. as to which key your Flash Summoner spell should be placed on. Yep. F is made for. Uh. F is. It's for... F is definitely for Flash. F is for Flash. Thank you so much. Ah, see, we outnumber you. The song is, I think, originally from SpongeBob. SpongeBob. Yeah, because it's the F is for fun or whatever. Well, F is for friends. U is for you and me. And yeah, is for and anywhere and anytime yeah, at all. Yeah. Down yeah. here in the deep blue I'm seat. surprised that you're the one who knows that song. I just have a very good memory. Or you're still a child. <coughs> Holy crabs. That's it for Summer Showcase. Be sure to send us your stuff so we can feature it on a future episode.
On today's BMRGG, we're talking about what to do when you're 03 in lane. So guys, what do you do when you're feeding? See, I don't feed very much, so see, you have a lot of personal experience here. What exactly do you do when you're feeding? Aside from just feed more, because I know that's that's the most common train yeah, for you. Yeah. yeah, well, I'm a giver. You are. Really. Everybody wants to have that game where they're like 8-0 coming out of the top lane on Fiora yeah. and just wrecking the other team. And I want to be able to give that to them. When you're feeding, step one is to stop feeding, right? When you go into lane and you're 0-3 and your lane opponent is 3-0, you can't fight back. You got to figure out something else to do because that guy's just going to murder you and you're going to be 0-4. Kind of keying off this idea of don't fight back when you're behind, I think people's initial instinct is to buy combat stats when they're behind because I need the power to fight to win that next one. But if you can spend 150 gold on two wards and you're not giving the enemy 300 gold, that's actually a win for you. You're actually making up gold by doing that. All right, when you're significantly behind in lane, you just have to accept the fact that laning phase probably isn't gonna get much easier for you. So you have to start figuring out what else can you do with your time. Cause yeah, you can farm under tower and you know that sort of thing, but also adding value to your team. Maybe if you're in top lane and you're 0-3 or whatever, maybe come down and get dragon for your team. So you can add value to your team, even if you're not adding value directly to yourself. 0-3 is gonna become 0-4 if you battle this guy again. And that means don't expect jungle ganks. You're just gonna get your jungler killed too, but as a jungler, go gank the yes. six and no lane. And ganking and so, is a source of income for the team, essentially. Yeah. It's like we can kill the champion and maybe a turret, and hey, like our team has earned a thousand gold here instead of me killing two jungle camps. Yeah. Whatever it is, understand your individual role. But then when you expand it to a team, what is our team trying to do? Do we have a pick comp? Do we have a, a siege comp? So that when we see our opportunity for fights, we actually capitalize on them properly. The one advantage you can pull in no matter how far behind you are is you can have 5v4s. You can have 3v2s, whatever. All right, so if we break it down to three simple steps, it's one, stop the bleeding. Two, figure out what your individual role is on the team being underpowered. And then three, figure out what that circumstance is that's going to allow your team to come back in the game. Well, that's what we do when we're feeding. Let us know how you handle getting your ass kicked in the comments below. Oh, another good pull there, Blitz. I'm gonna call you Dr. Seuss, because you're so easy to read. Our guest today is the creator of Just OK Guides and the Just OK Gamers podcast. We're joined by Patrick Victorano, aka Guido. How's it going? I just want to say that when I agreed to do this show, I thought that Melanie would have been here. Uh, well, I'm sure she would have loved to have been here as well to meet you. Um, yeah. But on to the first, the first question, which is, uh, how did you get started playing League? Well, uh, you see there's an, a shortcut on my desktop, and I just double click it. Um, so how did you get started making guides? Well, I had friends that were new to the game, so I just showed them some simple item builds and champ mechanics. Yeah, teaching mechanics to new players is really clutch. Yeah, but I'm just okay, so uh, I guess my mechanics are a little shifty. Okay, well, um, moving on, here's an easy one. What, what would you say is your favorite champion? Benson. Benson the Fiery Dragon. The, what? That's not, that's not a champion. It is a champion, and I'm leaking him. No, no, we would never make that champion. The Fiery Dragon? That's not even a good title. His cue is that he turns into an even bigger dragon. I think Benson's my favorite, too. All right, well, Benson sounds wonderful, but uh, how did you come up with the format for Just OK Guides? Honestly, I really am just OK at the game. It became more clear that I could entertain better than I could teach, so I just rolled with it. Well, sure. I mean, teaching is kind of like tight pants. It's really hard to pull off. Well, it's a good thing that entertaining runs in my genes. You think you have the corset of skills required to teach people? Well, you just have me in stitches now. All right, that's uh, enough of that. Freak, do, how about you ask a question? Guido, what's your process like for making a video? Basically, I just record every game that I play. And then once I find one that has enough just OK plays in it, I do the narration all in one take. And then watch it over and cut in jokes for any slow areas. So you think this makes your videos a cut above the rest? Sort of. Only if my jokes are edgy enough Oh, two puns. You know, okay, well, before we run more. out of time, we do this fun thing on the show sometimes where we ask our guests whether or not they have any champion impressions. So do you, by any chance, have any? I do them all. Name one. Darius. I could do that. <clears throat> hey, go hey uh, guys, my name's Darius, and I have a, I have a big axe. Uh, not bad, not bad. And it's really sharp. Right. And I carry it around. OK, okay. Uh, that was wonderful. Uh, I have to say. We really appreciate you being on the show, Guido. I want to thank you for coming out. And of course, if you at home want to check out more Just OK content, please follow the links in the description below. My wife, I think I'm having trouble satisfying her. To be honest, if we're talking real right now, I'm, I'm going to 
have to say that she's not very happy yeah. in the sack. Okay. And I have my son too, don't get me started on my son who's, who's wants to be a chef, who wants to like cook food. And I'm like, no, no, you're a warrior. Warriors only use knives to stab people, not cut onions. I'm Darius. All right, that's it for our show. Thank you, Freak, for being a part of this episode. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and be sure to send us your stuff. Now, time for the last law. Oh! Yeah! I take, I take my axe and I put a wig on it, yeah. and I practice talking to my wife openly because I'm a big, strong, big boy warrior, and I, I have trouble, <laughs> sir. <laughs> <laughs>